Welcome to another edition of Daily Airline News, focusing on the tragic loss of Air India 171. I'm Geoffrey Thomas and delighted to say joined by my co-host Richard Godfrey in Frankfurt. Good morning to you, Richard. And good afternoon to you, Geoffrey. So viewers, this is going to be episode 186, but in fact, I've got an apology to you, which I'll get to in a minute. Viewers, We have been once again overwhelmed by viewers' questions and comments to Richard's fascinating 17-part report called The Plausible Hypothesis. The viewers have been full of praise um, for the work and some of the comments are getting more than 100 likes. In all, we've had 2,200 likes and 42 dislikes for the episode. And in fact, Boeing um, in Seattle has requested a copy of the report and we've sent it through to them as well. There's a couple of points I want to raise. While it is apparently a criminal investigation, we are told, that does not necessarily mean the pilots. It could mean maintenance engineers or it could mean other personnel. So we have to keep an open mind in that regard. Also, a few people have accused us of banning them because we don't like their comments. Well, contrary is the case where regular viewers will know we actually talk about these comments or criticisms and answer them head on. We're one of the few um, podcasts that do just that. Certainly, we delete comments that are sca- that, are, that are slanderous or ones that will incite a hateful debate because if we don't, YouTube will restrict our channel. YouTube itself also deletes comments. So the apology is we have decided to hold off on responding to viewers' comments and questions for 24 hours in light of the large number of personal and venomous attacks from a few viewers. We certainly appreciate the support of the other viewers who are countering these unfounded attacks. Richard, um, uh, quite an interesting 24 hours. Yes, it is. And... um... People may not be aware, but YouTube has published a set of standards which they require us as moderators to uh, comply with. And if they sense any comments or uh, questions from uh, any viewers are inappropriate, they will automatically put them in a uh, on hold. And then we're asked to review those that are on hold and to release those that are indeed okay and appropriate. Um, And we're told we must delete those that are inappropriate. And there have been one or two, um, but I'd like to really underline in the last 24 hours, we haven't uh, banned any viewers from the YouTube channel. And there has only been a few landing in this hold queue from YouTube and there was only one out of those few that we decided to de- to delete and it came from Dougal 03 and he starts off anything but blame Boeing and their Patsy the FAA. Uh, we had one viewer write to us an email last night wanting us to act as a witness, expert witness in a legal battle against Boeing, FAA and NTSB. Uh, We declined to get involved in any legal disputes. Yes, it's, um, you know, the bottom line here is that as the owners um, of the YouTube channel, me specifically, uh, you then held or can be held responsible for harbouring, you know, uh, slanderous uh, comments Um, that have been made. Um, So we have to be very, very careful. And also, uh, if a comment incites uh, a a vicious debate, and of course, these can get out of hand very quickly, uh, they can escalate escalate very quickly. And uh, as the owner of the YouTube channel, uh, we are held responsible by YouTube for that. And if it's deemed to be hateful and inciting um, um, heated debate of one kind or another, uh, they could shut us down. And so yeah. we have to be very, very careful about what is said. And I mean, 
the bottom line is newspapers. It's interesting. Newspapers usually have a barrister on their staff dealing with what you can say, what you can't say. Uh, and being a global YouTube channel, we cover a, vari a vast range of jurisdictions where a comment in one jurisdiction may be deemed okay. In another jurisdiction, it certainly is not okay. So we have to be very mindful and we really have to take a heavy hand to comments that uh, could be slanderous or could be insightful. Yeah, but having said that, in the last uh, month, we've had over a million views and the vast majority, 98%, uh, like what we're doing. Mm. And there are a few, uh, 42 precisely on every single episode, um, who dislike what we're doing. So mm. fine, uh, we respect those 42 people and their uh, regular dislike of what we're doing. But on the other hand, we look at our subscribers and there are almost 30,000 meanwhile, and they expect a YouTube channel to be free of criticism from other viewers just simply because you, they didn't like uh, the opinion e expressed. And that uh, is not a healthy debate. So the reason we've held off for 24 hours is to allow more comments to come, more questions to come, and we will do a complete analysis of all comments, whether they agree or disagree with us, and we will bring tomorrow an episode with the results of that analysis and the key examples that express an opinion that is widely held by uh, a, a number of viewers, whether positive or negative. One of the things also, Richard, <clears throat> it's quite clear from some of the negative comments that the particular people making the comments, number one, have not watched the whole video, and number two, almost certainly have not downloaded the report um, because they ask questions which simply show that they haven't and the, and yeah. they and they make criticisms despite the fact that clearly they haven't uh, yeah. listened to the whole video and they certainly haven't downloaded the report yeah for example um criticism oh we don't mention we ignore completely the 180 not uh, ias statement in the preliminary report well if you've actually read our report yesterday, you'll find quite a complete analysis of the 180 knot IAS. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. So we've had over 2,000 likes on yesterday's episode. We've had almost half of those uh, downloading the report. So getting on towards 1,000 people mm -hmm. downloaded the report. Um, of course, we don't expect everyone to uh, want to uh, download the report or watch the complete episode. But if you choose not to watch the complete episode or not watch it at all, uh, and you choose not to download the report, then please don't criticize us for what we do say in the episode and, and pretend we don't say it. Uh, so, you know... It, there is, if you want a rational debate about Air India accident, fine, we're open to a rational debate, but we're not open to irrational, stupid, unfounded nonsense, and we certainly don't like venomous and vicious personal attacks. We laugh it off when you tell us we haven't changed our shirt in the last month and it's about time we uh, changed our shirt, we laugh those sort of things off. Uh, but when you tell us that we are wide, wildly speculating and leading the public astray, and we are deliberately harassing the victims and their families and their friends, uh, I'm sorry, we're not doing any of those. Our interest is aviation safety 
and uh, that is our goal. We are not going to stand for uh, the kind of vicious attacks that are being made currently. And some of those attacks, of course, are then directed at people who defend us, and that's not yeah. acceptable either, and that's yeah. totally, totally yeah. unacceptable. Yeah. Our regular subscribers, our loyal subscribers, who in many, many cases are engineers and pilots and people in the industry, uh, ought not to be subjected to subjected to criticism and vicious attacks by uh, people who blow in and blow out. Um, yeah. So, so for example, um, Trem Doctor 7 made 24 comments and replies yesterday, and he gained uh, 33 responses uh, from different viewers. Um, Reen K. Hook4169 from Holland, obviously, uh, made nine comments and gained 28 replies from different people. And both accusing us of wi wildly speculating. And Tram Doctor said, I'm not buying it either. And goes backwards and forwards between th these various people. Um, so they're working in a coordinated manner. Um, and you can see them. We've left them all up there. So you can go and read these comments and, and you can form your own opinion. Um, and tomorrow we will be answering them in full. I look forward to that episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some people probably won't want to watch or they'll say, oh, God, it's boring. And I fell asleep after three minutes. Well, if you don't want to watch, we're not insisting you watch. And if you don't want to subscribe, then please don't. There are plenty of other YouTube channels out there. Go and uh, look at those. Yeah. And also, viewers, I mean, for those, for those criticising us of being wildly speculative or keeping this thing going, you only have to look at the laundry list of crashes that we highlighted a couple of days ago where the reports were flawed, uh, covered up, or in fact, we haven't had a report yet, and we probably never get a report in the case of China Eastern because they reckon it'll upset upset the Chinese society, so they're not going to give us a report. So, you know, we're keeping pressure on where pressure needs to be kept on because clearly the preliminary report for Air India 171 is seriously flawed, lots of gaps, and the NTSB even threatened to walk away from it at, uh, at one stage. So there's clearly something wrong with that report. And uh, by doing what we're doing, we're keeping pressure on them to give us the full details because, as we mentioned earlier, the 2,100 787 flights a day carrying half a million passengers every day. Wow. That's a lot of people who really need to know exactly what caused this terrible, terrible tragedy. Um, wouldn't you agree, Richard? Yeah. And, you know, China Eastern publishing a one-pager uh, without saying anything about the crash is an insult to the aviation community, the flying public. And uh, China is the largest user and operator of Boeing aircraft outside of the USA. Mm. And I'm sorry, if you want to continue to use Boeing aircraft, then when an accident happens involving a Boeing aircraft, you need to be responsible and publish a full report. The ICAO tells you exactly what needs to be in an investigative report and gives you the timeline. Uh, after a month, a preliminary. After a year, a full. And we have now got over three years and there hasn't been any report. Mm. So I plea with the Chinese authorities to publish a final report in accordance with the ICAO guidelines. I agree, absolutely. So viewers, we'll be back tomorrow, uh, Richard and uh, I, and we will be going through doing a, a thorough analysis of all the comments and all those nasty ones or not so nasty ones or critical ones. We'll come back with the answers that you're looking for 
and uh, we have answers to them all. So yeah, and uh, there's some very good comments and very good questions, and we've tried online to answer quite a number already. So mm. you know, uh, keep keep uh, checking in online because. Uh, you may find uh, the answer to your question uh, is already uh, provided. Yeah. So viewers, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing to us. If you don't, please do. Uh, thank you for the wonderful supportive comments. Thank you for the questions. Um, and Richard, we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah. And that was about the shortest episode we've ever done. It, it, that'll, yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so uh, do tune in tomorrow. Thank you, viewers. Thank you very much. Take care.